عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every one of us and to grant us Jannatul Firdaus My beloved brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many names. And these are the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And indeed, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. So use them to call out to Him. Use the different names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to supplicate unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's our duty to learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From among those names, there is a name, Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman has got to do with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that encompasses everything. It encompasses the believers and the disbelievers and the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Ar-Rahman. One of the names is Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahim is also connected to the mercy of Allah. But it is a specialized mercy for the believers. There is a special mercy for those who believe. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to tell his companions to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he used to instruct the others who were not yet believers to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prostrate unto Him. And the term used at times would be to prostrate to the most merciful. Why? They used to prostrate to the idols. They used to prostrate to whatever they made. And they, there were so many idols that they used to worship. But they never prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ مُسْجُدُوا لِلرَّحْمَانِ قَالُوا وَمَا الرَّحْمَانِ When it was said unto them, prostrate to the most merciful, they would say, what is the most merciful? Astaghfirullah. What is it? What are you referring to? They would try belittling the statement and they would try to add insult, yet they would only be insulting themselves. If someone says, prostrate to the most merciful, what would your answer be? My brothers and sisters, I don't want to say that our answer would be we would not prostrate. Because so many times a day, we listen to the Mu'addin calling us towards the prostration and wallahi, we don't go to prostrate. So we need to go back to look at our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan that when the disbelievers were told to prostrate to the most merciful, they said, what is the most merciful? What about the believers? When they are called towards prostration, they immediately fall prostrate. And this is why, whenever we listen to these verses of sajda, it is our duty to immediately fall prostrate for the sake of Allah. Because we are saying, we are not like those who have refused to prostrate. Number one. Number two, some of the verses have an instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we immediately obey that instruction and fall prostrate. Number three, some of the verses have an, have an instruction to others and they had fulfilled it. So we too show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if the others did it, we will also do it. So these are the few reasons why we fall prostrate in what is known as sajda to tilawa. It is known as the prostration during the recitation of the Quran. Remember, my brothers and sisters, never ever be lazy to fulfill your salah. That is the prostration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that on the day of judgment, those who will be called to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who were not prostrating in this world, will not be able to prostrate because their backs will become straightened and they won't be able to fall down in prostration. So make it a habit to turn to Allah. This is a beautiful month, a month of prayer, a month of recitation of the Quran, a month of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Remember, when the Mu'adhin calls, Wallahi, if you heard it, it is registered against you and your ears. Your ears have heard, Hayya ala al-falah, come to success. And you didn't go? And you still expect success? May Allah make us steadfast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. So my brothers and sisters, thereafter, when they asked the question, what is Ar-Rahman? You know, it is something to say, who is Ar-Rahman? You are at least asking, who are you referring to? But to say what is an insult. You know, if, I, if you were to say your name to someone, and they were to answer you in a way that made you seem like an animal, wouldn't it be insulting? Remember, if someone tries to insult Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala or the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality they are only insulting themselves they cannot at all insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the insult is against them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so in the next verse verse number 63 of surah al-furqan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains who is ar-rahman and how he chooses to explain it is to show that those who really worship the most merciful, they will be recognized by their qualities. What are the qualities of the worshippers of the most merciful? It's easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, these are the worshippers of Allah. But no, he says, these are the worshippers of the most merciful. Because if these were the qualities of the people, they would earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wouldn't you like to know what these qualities are? So that we can be saved from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says, my worshippers, the worshippers of the most merciful, these are their qualities. He starts off by saying, verse number 63, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا and indeed, the worshippers of the most merciful, when they walk on the earth, they walk in a specific way, filled with humility and humbleness. They are recognized by the way they carry themselves. The worshippers of the most merciful, they are recognized by the way they carry themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of dignity, people of respect, people who carry themselves in the best possible way, remembering that they are the worshippers or that we are the worshippers of the most merciful. So if you carry yourself well, you are actually calling the mercy of Allah upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. When a believer, true believer walks, he's not rushing. Obviously, once in a while, you may be in a slight rush. Make sure that that does not cause injury or harm to yourself or to others. When a mu'min, a true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is driving, he is careful of the road rules so that not to hurt someone else and not to harm himself. Because this body, he knows it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a true believer is in any conveyance, he makes sure that he is with dignity. Say you are on a plane or a train or a bus. A true believer, the one who worships the most merciful, is concerned about the well-being of the rest of the human beings who share the same mode of transport. There are people with you on the bus. You don't just, you know, listen to whatever you're listening to so loudly that you're disturbing the people. Or you open up your food in a way that the aromatic samosas and everything else, smelling for everyone, looking at you, and you smiling, eating it, and nodding your head and licking your lips. That's not a believer. You carry yourself so well that you share with others. They are human beings. Subhanallah. It's not enough to just carry yourself well. The next part of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When the ignorant address the true worshippers of the most merciful, the response is peace. So even the way the true worshippers speak, saves themselves from a problem with ignorant people. You know this man argues, you know that this man is picking on you, you know that this person, this woman or this man is actually trouble and still you want to get back and respond in a way that will flare the inferno? Not at all. Never. 
True believer, you know. So when someone starts up with you, you can smile back and say, Salam, peace, walk away. Peace. If you want to say something, say a good word, walk away. Your expression as a believer will save you from a lot of problems on earth and even in the akhirah. Because your expression, my beloved brothers and sisters, can actually be an act of charity, rewardable by paradise. Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa. You know that the Prophet ﷺ says, to smile at the face of your brother is actually an act of charity. So imagine, your expression would actually help you in a very, very big way. And if that was the case, what about your words? Choose your words wisely. If you're a believer, remember, when you just say whatever comes to your mind by your tongue, without thinking about it deeply, without selecting the correct words, then indeed you have wasted the function of the brain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. You want to say something, you know what you want to say, there's one more stage before you actually say it. Choose the best words to say it. Then you say it. So instead of saying, for example, shut up, you can say, silence please. Subhanallah. Or you can say, please be quiet. Or you can just sometimes look if it's your own child, you can just look at them and it's enough. So it depends for every situation, there is a response that is the most befitting for that particular situation. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the worshippers of the most merciful because they will earn the mercy of Allah in this world and the next. So Allah says, when the ignorant address you, do not get into an argument. You know there is a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu says, a person who leaves arguments, even if he knows he's right, would actually be promised a place in Jannah. Subhanallah. Because you didn't argue. Don't want to argue. You want to learn? I will teach you. We want to discuss? Let's discuss it respectfully. You want to argue? Sorry, not me. Subhanallah. Not me. I'm out of here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And may Allah make us from those who do not argue and who do not respond to argument except in the best possible way. Even if you look like a fool, keep on saying, Salam, walk away. The next time, peace, walk away. Subhanallah, even if they continue to try, you know, some people, it's their job. Every time they see you, they want to pin, you know, they want to twist, they want to key. No, no, no. I'm not going to be a little Mickey Mouse that actually goes according to your key. No way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how those believers, now these are all qualities. Tonight, we're going to speak only about the qualities of those whom Allah loves. And He calls them worshippers of the most merciful. He did not say worshippers of Allah. He chose a name of His because all these qualities would call the mercy of Allah. They would deserve the mercy of Allah. So if you have the mercy of Allah, you have saved yourself from the anger of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا the true worshippers of the most merciful who are searching for the mercy of Allah at night, they spend their night between prostration and bowing, ruku and sajda. They spend a portion of the night in salah. What would this mean? Allah did not even speak about the five daily prayers because those are obligatory, they are in order. Now you want the mercy of Allah, you need to make an extra effort. Come on my brothers and sisters, once in a while, get up for Salatul Tahajjud. Fulfill, even if it means two units, fulfill them. Start off in one way or another. I give you a good way forward. Nowadays, we get up to eat, don't we? What is it called early in the morning? Suhoor, right? Not breakfast please, not seven o'clock, no. We get up, subhanallah, in this part of the world, we have perhaps the shortest fasts in the world. At the moment, perhaps one of the shortest fasts in the world. Only 11 and a half hours, if I'm not mistaken. So, if you get up at quarter to six, for example, half past five, for example, you have enough time to make wudu, to fulfill two units, four units, six units of tahajjud. Two is also okay. And to make a dua to Allah, because at that time, the last third of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven, asking the people, who is there who is calling out to me that I can respond to him or her? Who is there who is asking me a need that I can reply? Who is there who is seeking forgiveness that I can forgive? 
We cannot be awake at the time and only bothered about our oaths and our conflicts. That's not good enough. You are awake at the time. Yes, your food is important. But that's not the only thing. There is something way beyond the importance of food. And that is the call of Allah. The most merciful is saying, Hey, I would like to forgive you. Are you asking for the forgiveness? We're busy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And we're awake at the time. We're awake. Wallahi, we're awake. So I call on you tomorrow morning, remind each other, if you're staying in the same home, listen, call out to Allah. This is the time of mercy. While we're eating. No problem. While you're on the table, you can still call out to Allah. You can do two things at once. But you can't eat while you're in tahajjud, please. You can't eat while you're in salah. No, that doesn't work that way. So the tahajjud, you'll have to get up five minutes earlier, ten minutes earlier. And you are getting up anyway. What do you lose? Allah says, you want the mercy of Allah. Ibadur Rahman. They are the ones who spend the night between sujood and ruku'ah. So if you are used to it in the month of Ramadan, I promise you outside Ramadan, your eye will just open because you're used to it. Ask those who are regular with Salatul Fajr. Before the Mu'addin starts, already the eye is open. It's Fajr. Before the clock rings, already they are up, subhanallah, because they're used to it. This body is computerized already, subhanallah, but we don't realize this. So that is something absolutely important to spend the night in prayer. Then we have something that is even more serious. The true worshippers of the most merciful, they want to save themselves from the fire of Jahannam. So they know about the fire of hell and they know that they seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ Those are the ones, they are the ones who say, O oh our Rabb, keep away from us, divert from us the punishment of Jahannam, of hellfire. For indeed, its punishment is severe and it is a bad abode. We know about it, which means the true worshippers of the most merciful, they've already learned about what hellfire is. And they are worried about being thrown in it. They want to save themselves. So my brothers and sisters, one of the ways of saving ourselves from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hellfire is to constantly ask Allah to protect us from hellfire. رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا What a powerful dua. What a powerful dua. Even if you were just to say the first portion of it. رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ O oh, our Rabb, divert from us the punishment of hellfire. Subhanallah. Keep asking Allah this. Because if you ask this to Allah, He will give it to you. It will go in your records. It will be written in your book that you asked Allah to save you from hellfire. So if it is in your book a hundred times, a thousand times, or twenty times every day, the day you die, it will be written that this person on the last day, they asked Allah ten times, Oh Allah, save me from the punishment of hellfire. Do you really think that the most merciful who calls himself Ar-Rahman is going to say, No, 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 that's besides the point. I still want to throw him into the fire. Allah is more merciful than that. So remember this. Keep on asking Allah. Be genuine in it and Allah will give it to you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. Then... It is important that the qualities of the true believers are shown even in their dealings. Even in their dealings. Because sometimes you find a person, they are reading five salah in the first saf. But when they go out, they are deceiving this one. They have stolen the property of that one. They haven't yet paid that one. They are seeking interest from the other one. They are eating interest from a third party, etc, etc. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about infaq. About spending. And this is to do with the dealings, the dealings of the true believers. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا Those whom when they spend, they are neither miserly nor do they waste. But they have sought a middle path between those two. Now, 
just like in the previous point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about prayer that was voluntary because the five compulsory prayers would already have been taken care of when people begin voluntary prayers. In the same way, if Allah is speaking about not being miserly and not being wasteful, then you need to know that the halal and haram in terms of living, buying and selling should already be taken for, should already be done. Subhanallah. Halal and haram. That is something that's not even a question. You cannot consume haram because if you do, then there is a lot of improvement that is required. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. But this is over and above it. I've earned halal. Everything is okay. I've stayed away from haram. But guess what? I don't even spend on my family. I spoke about it a few days ago, right? When I said we don't even take our family members on a holiday. Once in a while you take them out here and there. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah help us to use our wealth. You know, you have it, spend it. Yes, you may save and you must save because you may have something to buy that is perhaps a property maybe or perhaps a vehicle or something you need or you may want to save up for a rainy day. But don't be so miserly that you have enough and you're not spending at all. And the people around you are just looking at you, but dad, you know, but mom, What's going on here, you know? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who strike a balance. Some people waste and some people are very, very miserly. Allah says you need to strike a balance. If you're a true worshipper, you're a true believer, you strike a balance in your spending, people should pick it up immediately. That This person is a worshipper of the most merciful. Like we said, as soon as someone deals with you, they know you're honest. Subhanallah. They know that this person, no, no need to worry. They won't cheat me. They won't deceive me. And so on. Then, now that the discussion has been rotating around that which is to do with dealings with people. You know, whether you're talking, whether you're walking, whether you're buying or selling. And the fact that you are seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from hellfire. That, that particular point, yes, it is connected to the hereafter. But remember, my brothers and sisters, when you seek protection from hellfire, there are two major points that you need to be concerned about. Number one, your relationship with Allah. Never associate partners with Allah. And never transgress against Allah. Number two is your fellow human beings. Make sure that you have a record that is straight with them. Seek forgiveness from those you have wronged. Do good to people. Don't be bad. Don't be harsh. So this is why when you're seeking protection from Jahannam, you need to look into yourself to say, where do I need improvement? And whatever I need improvement in, I'm going to improve it. I'm going to make sure that I try my best to improve as a person. My character, my conduct, the way I speak to my children, the time I spend with my family members needs to improve. The quality of it needs to improve as well. And so on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the point of shirk specifically and he says وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر, Those who do not call out to gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They do not call out to deities besides Allah When they call out, they call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So that is being addressed here And it is an important point Together with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النفس. And they do not perpetrate murder They don't kill they don't perpetrate murder. They don't harm people. The harm, some leads all the way to death. And the other type of harm may not lead to death. But if it is harmful, you as a believer should be careful. You should not harm others, Muslim or non-Muslim. Why are you harming a person just because they don't share the faith that you have? That is prohibited, it's wrong. You cannot just harm them. They didn't harm you. They didn't attack you. No. Subhanallah. So you cannot just harm someone, pick at random anyone off the street and say, right, picking on this person, I'm harming them. Why? They're not Muslims. 
Some people are preaching and promoting this type of ideology. And this is wrong. At the time of the Prophet wasallam, even at the time of his death wasallam, there were Jewish people and Christians in Medina Munawwara. And there was a business dealing that had happened with Muhammad wasallam and a Jewish man. So much so that his armor was with the Jewish man when he passed on. wasallam. So it's not wrong. My brothers and sisters... This is something we need to make clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the true believers do not kill. They do not perpetrate murder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Then Allah says, وَلَا يَزْنُونَ Simple statement. He's added it on shirk, murder, and zina. Zina meaning and true believers do not engage in immorality. Anything that is considered immoral behavior, a true believer is far away from it. So if you'd like to save yourselves from the calamities of this world and the next, you need to protect yourself from immorality. Yes, adultery and fornication may be at a very high level of immorality. But remember the beginning of it, it might start in a very simple way. Some people are hooked on to pornography and they justify it to say, no, I watch it with my wife so that we can spice up our life. Where did you get that halalization from? That's wrong. There's no stamp on there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. It is prohibited. You cannot justify haram. It's like someone saying, no, we drink alcohol, just the two of us, so that, you know, it feels nice in bed, you know, we, we can feel a little bit high. What's that? There's no justification, not at all. You cannot say that, you cannot do that. If it is prohibited, it is prohibited at all times. So remember... Pornography is also immoral behavior. That's what it is. It's immorality. May Allah protect our youth. May Allah protect the adults as well. Those who are hooked. Those who, are, who have this habit in secret and private that others don't even know about. May Allah help you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you to eradicate that problem. I know of so many people who say, you know, I don't like it. I don't want it. But for some reason, you know, it just comes on my phone. How does it just... Come on your phone, you know. I don't understand. I'm sure you have to fiddle with the phone a little bit before it comes onto your phone, you know. But this is, these are excuses. May Allah strengthen us. Keep on making dua to Allah. And like I said yesterday, keep on trying. Keep on trying. You fell once, keep on trying. Go again. Block it, stop it. You fell a second time, seek Allah's forgiveness. Try again. There will come a day when you will quit by the help of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep on trying. Don't ever give up. Never, not at all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after speaking of immorality, He speaks about seeking forgiveness. And before speaking about seeking forgiveness, He says, those who engage in these crimes, they will face a severe punishment. Severe punishment on the day of judgment. And they will be given such a serious punishment that it will last very, very long. Now obviously when we hear that, like I said, Allah always says, wait, hang on, there is an exception. What is the exception? The punishment will be meted out to those with exception of the ones who have sought the forgiveness of Allah, they have believed and they did good deeds thereafter, we will convert the bad deeds into good deeds as a gift for them, so that these bad deeds will be on the right side of the scale as good deeds, because of the quality of belief and following up with good deeds. That's the mercy of Allah. Whatever bad you've done, there will be two things, and inshallah I will expand on this tomorrow, but two things that we need to know today. You seek Allah's forgiveness, He will forgive you. But if you want to convert the bad into good, there is a way of doing it. You need two qualities. Without these two, it's not going to convert. It might be forgiven, but to convert it, you need an extra quality. What is that? Allah says, Illa man taba, the tawbah we know for both of them. When you engage in tawbah, you've sought the forgiveness, you have asked for the forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. But, 
wa amana wa amila amalan saliha you have believed in allah and you followed up with only good deeds so if you did a sin you committed a sin you sought the forgiveness of allah and after that you only did good deeds and you did not go back to that bad deed allah says you deserve for us you deserve that we convert it for you into good why because you didn't do it again you carried on with goodness and you did good for the rest of your life thereafter allah says oh in that case there is a bonus awaiting you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that bonus so these are beautiful verses of forgiveness allah will forgive us and if we remain steadfast filled with conviction allah will even convert for us the bad into good in such a way that we earn paradise may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all we continue tomorrow insha allah aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk